So I wanted to share my latest um, efforts in trying to animate some tank tracks. I'm showing you my first pass here in Blender. And basically what I thought I was gonna do is just take these little pieces of the track and throw them on a, a curve, right? So I have this curve here and then put an array modifier on it. So that's what I, my first instinct, you know, the simplest way to do this. And then when you animate it, so let me just hide these for a sec. When you animate it, all you have to do is animate this position moving a little bit in the X axis and the like array and the curve, they'll take care of the rest for you. So it kind of just, you know, kind of just goes. So this is like kind of a naive approach for a number of reasons. I'll show you when we get in the engine why this doesn't work. So um, let's go ahead and export this into Godot and we'll see why you can't just do it this way. Okay, so I've brought this into Godot here and we have this um, object and the, I don't know, the animation naming is really messed up. This is this happens whenever you use the NLA option in the export. I don't really know why, but if we hit play here, you'll notice, let me zoom in again. Um, there we go. Like it's moving the whole object forward and took me a second to realize why this was happening and it doesn't matter if you do it on this side or this side it's going to do the same thing it's really not going to work at all so what the heck is going on here and why does this do this if you think about the modifier stack what's happening is the array gets applied onto this object and then it gets merged to like one piece of geometry so even though blender can do this fancy calculation with the curves and all that after it gets converted to a single mesh, it's just doing this, right? So you're just sliding the whole object after the array is applied back and forth. So this obviously doesn't work. Let me show you what did work and what I had to do. So we'll look at some Python scripting. So how do we fix this? Um, we're probably going to embark on a bit of a journey here. I'm gonna try to make this video not too, too long, but the solution to this was kind of crazy. Um, so let me just hop into power save. I'm going to go forward. This is what I ended up with. And you can see I've got some like Python pains and whatnot down here. So I really want to explore like how I did this and just, and just share my approach here and maybe it'll help someone. We'll see. So I'm going to just power save this. Um, so we have a new one to work with so I can kind of mess it up a bit and the way it works, I'll show you this. So let me delete all of these other track pieces. We'll go ahead and delete that. And did I delete too many? No, there we go. So we have one track piece here and I still have a curve, right? So I still have this curve. The other issue I had is I couldn't use a path. I had to use a Bezier curve and that has to do with how we do the follow path animation here, but we'll see that in a second. It doesn't look as nice as the path that I originally made, but it's, I don't know, it, it'll, it'll work what i came down to was using the follow path function so let me show you that so first what i'm going to do in this in this blender file is i'm just going to clear this animation here so we're going to clear that uh actually i might delete all the animations because i just don't want this to get messed up you're going to see how wild this uh wild this is so delete those and let's go to view layer and what i want to do is i want to do a follow path so you shift click the path control p and then follow. The other thing you might need to do if your object has like an origin, you can just go F3, clear origin, and that'll put it right at the beginning. And what this does, and I'll show you this in the path editor, or in the path menu. If you click over here, you're gonna have this path animation here. And you can specify how many frames you want. I wanted 200 frames because I wanted like a lot of granularity in how this looks. Um, one more thing that's kind of weird is you'll notice it doesn't go perfectly flat. So there's something a little weird. If you just go into tab um, and uh, maybe rotate it a little, you can make sure, you know, get it pretty much flat um, or very close to flat. So that way, when it goes around the curve, it, it looks better. So you have a piece and it's going to go around the curve. And what we want to do is we actually want to bake this animation. So if we bake it, we go object, uh, animation, bake. 
there's some special settings you have to click. We're going to do the full 200 frames. Then we're going to do the visual keying and clear parents. So I just had to mess around with these settings until it worked properly. But if you do that, it should work properly. So now what we have is we have an animation that goes around um, based on these keyframes. And the insight that I kind of had, and I found this from like a Stack Exchange post, maybe I'll, I'll link it below, um, is that you can, you can duplicate this, right? So if I duplicate this, and then I have another piece and it, and it has a new action on it, um, here's kind of a clever thing you can do. So all right, let's shift all of them, say 10 to the right. And then I grab the frames on the end and I bring them back to the beginning. Um, it might not be perfect because I didn't copy and paste it, but you can probably see what's happening here, right? So we took the second object, we shifted it by a little bit and then brought those frames at the end back to the beginning. So it seems like overcomplicated way to do this, but it's two separate objects. Both of them have their origins right at the middle and we've got independent um, animations for them. So you'll see at the end, we can merge all these together and then, um, yeah, so how do we automate this? Cause I don't want to have to do this a hundred times. Uh, so let's delete this track piece and I'm going to scrub this back to the beginning. And let me just actually delete the other animation as well. So we're going to delete that. All right. So what did I do? I'll probably share these scripts, uh, somehow somewhere. Um, but yeah, basically we're getting into doing some Python scripting and all we're doing is I have this function that adjusts the keyframes and it allows you to take any object and you can, it'll shift it, right? So it'll shift it all the keyframes say to the right by 10 and it'll take those last, I don't know, 10 keyframes and put them at the beginning. So that's all it does. It does like what I just did manually. And I can probably show you if I do uncomment this. Um, this code is kind of messy, bear with me. But if I just do this adjust keyframes, um, I'm gonna select this guy and then hit play. And there you go. So you see it moves. And the reason it moves is because we've shifted all the keyframes now, right? Um, I don't necessarily wanna do that, but that's how it works. So the next thing I need to do is I want to duplicate them like a number of times. And all I do is I set up a little for loop and then I duplicate the object, um, get that current active object after the duplication and then adjust the frames of each one of those objects. So let me just do this for like five items and you'll see uh, what happens here. So if I hit play now, I click that, hit play. Uh, I got some sort of error here. I don't know why, but yeah, you can see it created the five, um, the five keyframes here. All right, so that's how you do that. Uh, let me set this back to 49. I kind of found out that 49 was the magical number to make all this work. And yeah, so let's run this. And then you're gonna see there's some more issues after this. Oh, I probably got an error because of this thing down here. So let's just do, um, let's just comment this out if false for now just to break off all that. All right, so I'm gonna duplicate this. There you go. So you get your uh, 49 other track pieces, put them all in this folder, and then, yeah. So let's play this. So that's kind of cool. I wanna export this into Godot now and show you what this actually looks like. There is an issue with this, and that's why I have some more code down here, but we'll talk about that in a sec. So let me go ahead and export this. Let's do character test, you know, for, and what I want to do this time is I'm going to have most of my defaults here, but I actually want to merge the active actions because I have like 49 different or 50 different actions. Um, I need to merge them. So let me, let's do that and let's take a look over here. So now we have the new piece here. And so we have a single animation, but we have all these objects. Um, so if I play it, it should actually work now. There you go. So like the animation works, it stutters a little, and that's because we need to do some cleanup stuff. Um, but it actually works. 
one of the major problems with this is you'll notice we have like 53 draw calls for these very, very, very simple objects. So there is a way to fix this actually using instancing and it's pretty, it's pretty cool that you can actually optimize this. So if I hop back into Blender, one of the problems we have now is I have all these track pieces that they all have the same origin, right? They all in theory should use the same mesh data, but they don't. Really what we need to do, and probably what I'll do is I'll take this a step back because I need to I need to clean up the animation and then I need to instance all of these guys so they refer to the same mesh. So let's do the animation cleanup first because you kind of need to like delete all the pieces and then and then do it that way. So this animation here, uh, it's gonna have a whole bunch of different tracks and we don't need them all. Like I don't need a, if you look, look at the Y axis, I do not need to animate the Y axis. Um, X and Z location, I do need to animate and I should also animate the Y rotation. But the X rotation, I don't need. So X rotation here, I'm just gonna delete that. The Z rotation, don't need it. And then it's not being scaled, so we'll just get rid of those. So you can clean up the animation pretty good. And then I'm gonna repeat my duplicate process. So let me just double check. Yeah, I'm gonna delete all these animations just so it's clean again. So we'll delete those. And then go into view later, um, excuse me. And then go into view layer and we will, um, next we're just gonna run this little piece here. So. All right, so now we've got our track pieces back in here. So that's a little better. The animation is a bit smaller. And then the next thing I want to do is I actually want to instance them all. So I want to set them all to have this mesh name, track piece underscore new. So the way I did that, let me just turn this bit of code off, turn this on. There's some other stuff in here. I'm just going to comment this out, remove bevel modifier. I had some some other glitches I had that kind of made me realize it wasn't going to work. And that's because I had a whole bunch of modifiers on each of these pieces and you can't do instanced uh, meshes when they still have modifiers on them. I actually want to go through a whole list of objects in the selected objects and just set them to the mesh data. This is all I really want to do. So set mesh instance. And then we do, we just hit play. Uh, we get an error, so that's fun. Okay, so I realized my mistake here. This needs to be the object name, so we need to actually find track piece. And then the dot data portion of it here, this is actually the mesh. So let's try this again. I'm gonna select all these, and then we will run this, and it should work. So if you look at these now, yeah, so they all reference the same uh, mesh. And one really quick way to check this is you could just go into tab mode here, and then like do some scaling or something or move it. And you should see all those pieces move because they all um, reference the same mesh data. Okay, so they all use the same mesh data. They do have a bunch of different actions, but we're merging them in the export. Let me export this again and show you what it looks like now in Godot. Okay, so this is a pretty big improvement. If you look at the number of draw calls here, we only have four. So this is awesome, actually. So in terms of the rendering pipeline, you're getting all of these pieces on a single draw call and you're getting animation on all. Of them. So uh, that pretty much solved it for me. Um, this is a little test character, but this is the actual character I went with. And let me just show you what I actually I'm still working on this, but I'll show you what it looks like in this little level that I'm working on. So yeah, now I have this, these, don't worry about those boxes in the background. Um, now I have these tank tracks, right? So uh, I'm still tweaking this, but like you can see rotate right, you get the, the animation here for this guy, rotate to the left and you can see they, they go in opposite directions. Um, and then obviously forward, they both go in the same and then reverse, they both go in the same. So yeah, anyways, that's what I wanted to show. I, it took me a minute to figure this out, but hopefully that helps someone out there who's trying to do this animation. So um, thanks for watching and I'll, uh, I'll catch you guys next time.